Did you know that some people attract mosquitoes more than others? And children do tend to attract mosquitoes more than adults. In this video, I'm going to give you some tips on how to identify mosquito bites in babies and children, safe and effective ways to treat them, and the best ways to prevent them. First, let's start off by talking about the appearance of mosquito bites versus other insect bites. Of course, if you see the mosquito on your child, then it's easy to be certain where the bite came from, but sometimes you will only notice the bites hours later or the next day, and you might not be sure if it's from a mosquito or another insect. I'm going to mention several other insect bites that may appear similar and how to differentiate them. Mosquito bites can vary in size based on the child's natural reaction to the mosquito's saliva, but in general, they show up as small, raised, round areas of swelling that are initially white or light pink in color and then turn red. They tend to show up on parts of the body that are not covered by clothing. And the mosquito bites can be very itchy, especially in the first day or two. If there are multiple bites, they tend to show up in a random pattern. Bites from bed bugs are sometimes mistaken for mosquito bites. Some children will develop raised red itchy bumps while others experience swelling and pain in the areas where they were bitten. Unlike mosquito bites, they follow more of a pattern of several bites clustered together or in a line. Bites from bed bugs usually take place during the night while the child is sleeping and also tend to show up in areas that were not covered up by clothing although they can burrow under clothing and bite areas that were covered up. Bed bug bites can show up hours to days later, whereas mosquito bites show up quickly after the bite. Flea bites are also sometimes mistaken for mosquito bites. Similar to bed bug bites, flea bites show up as red bumps that appear in clusters or lines. However, they're distinctively small and oftentimes have a reddish halo surrounding the center of the bite. The most common places to find them include the legs or ankles, but they can also be found around the waist, the folds of the elbows and knees, and the armpit and groin area. Sometimes it's hard to figure out if the bites are from mosquitoes, bed bugs, or fleas, but the great news is that they all respond to the same treatment approach. So with that said, let's talk about how to treat mosquito bites. As soon as you notice mosquito bites on your child, if you have rubbing alcohol, use some to swab over the area of the insect bite as it can reduce the body's response to the protein in the mosquito's saliva, which is the actual thing that triggers the body to react. If you're able to get your child to cooperate for five to 10 minutes, put a cool compress or something cold onto the bite site to decrease the swelling and inflammation. It's ideal to prevent your child from scratching at the bite since that can irritate or break the skin and lead to a skin infection. Of course, this is easier said than done. I'm going to mention some things that have been found to be effective. Arnica oil is made from a plant and is a natural option. The anti-inflammatory and pain relieving properties can help decrease swelling and speed up the healing process. Other good options include calamine lotion and over-the-counter 1% hydrocortisone cream. If your child is still having a lot of itching, even with you applying the topical treatments two to three times a day, Another thing you can try to help decrease the itch is to mix a small amount of baking soda with just enough water to create a paste. Apply it directly to the bites and after about 10 minutes, wash it off. Follow it up with applying either arnica oil, calamine lotion, or hydrocortisone cream. Regardless of which one you choose to use, continue to apply it two to three times daily until symptoms go away to get maximum benefit. To help prevent your child from scratching at the bites or getting the topical treatments onto their hands and then into the mouth or eyes, it's helpful to cover the bites with band-aids. In situations where your child is very uncomfortable from swelling and itching, it's fine to give an over-the-counter antihistamine medication like children's Zyrtec or Benadryl. I have links to all of the items I just mentioned in the description below if you'd like to check them out. Some children develop a more severe reaction to mosquito bites. Typically within hours of getting the bite, they develop a large area of skin swelling, warmth, redness, and itching. 
If this is the case for your child and there are no fevers, chills, and your child is otherwise well appearing, it's best to be proactive and try to minimize the reaction by starting your child on a children's antihistamine medication like children's Zyrtec or Benadryl. Continue to give the antihistamine medication at the interval that's recommended for several days until symptoms begin to resolve. The dose of some of the children's antihistamine medications are weight dependent and others are age dependent. The frequency at which they should be given also varies. So it's best for you to find out from your child's healthcare provider the best dose and frequency for your child. Also do the other things that I mentioned regarding the care of the bites to keep them clean and help decrease the itching. If symptoms continue to get worse, even with giving antihistamine medication and applying topical treatments several times a day, then you should have your child seen by a healthcare provider. Sometimes it's hard to tell if the area of swelling and redness is due to a severe reaction to the mosquito bite, irritation from the child scratching at it vigorously, or if there's a skin infection starting to brew. Whenever there are skin breaks, especially from scratching, it gives the bacteria that naturally live on our skin an opportunity to get in and start an infectious process. Some warning signs include the skin becoming more red and warm and the area of redness and swelling beginning to spread. In more severe cases, there can be chills or fevers. If you notice any of these symptoms, have your child evaluated. Now let's talk about how to prevent mosquito bites or at least the things you can do to decrease your child's risk of getting bitten. For babies that are younger than two months, the American Academy of Pediatrics does not recommend the application of insect repellent. If you will be outdoors in an area where mosquitoes are prevalent, placing a mosquito net over the baby carrier or stroller is effective. Since mosquitoes are weak flyers, the use of a fan has been shown to help keep them away. There are battery operated fans that you can clip onto the stroller and set to gently blow towards your child. On a hot summer day, not only will it help keep your baby cool, but it will also serve to deter mosquitoes from flying close by. Covering the skin by having your child wear long pants and lightweight long sleeve shirt, socks and closed toe shoes will limit the amount of skin that's exposed for a potential bite. For children that are two months and older, the most effective defense against mosquito bites is considered to be insect repellent. There are multiple active ingredients in insect repellents that have been approved as safe and long lasting, and they include picaridin, DEET, IR3535, oil of lemon eucalyptus, and nucatone. In the description below, I've included links to repellents that meet this criteria if you'd like to check them out. I know that a lot of parents are concerned about using a chemical repellent on their child and look for more natural options. Oil of lemon eucalyptus is a plant-based repellent and is a great natural option. However, it's only recommended to be used in children three years and older. More recently, Nucatone was approved as an effective and safe active ingredient for insect repellents. It's a naturally occurring compound in grapefruit, which actually gives it the distinctive smell and taste. Mosquitoes and other insects don't seem to like the smell or taste of it. Repellents made with Nucatone as their active ingredient are estimated to be available for purchase by 2022. There have also been more repellents containing essential oils showing up on the market. The main concern about them is that they lose effectiveness quicker. When applying a repellent, be sure to read the label and follow the directions and precautions. Apply just enough to cover your child's clothing and exposed skin. Using more doesn't necessarily make the repellent more effective. Be sure to spray the repellent in an open, well-ventilated area to avoid breathing it in. If your child is young, be sure that you are the one applying the repellent and never spray it directly onto your child's face or onto any cuts, wounds, or areas of skin irritation. Once your child returns indoors, wash the skin with soap and water to remove any repellent. This would be a good time for you to check the skin to see if your child got any bites. If so, you now know what you can do to minimize the redness and itchiness and get them to resolve quicker. See you in the next video.